Morning children, um, hope you're all doing okay. Uh, this morning I've got a little book to read you um, and it's about fairies. That's exciting, isn't it? So, it is called The Fairy Tale Hairdresser and the Sugar Plum Fairy. There we are. So I'm just going to read this to you. Kitty Lacey was the best hairdresser in all the land. On the day of the winter ball, Katie's salon was the busiest place in the town. Everyone in Fairy Village wanted to look their best for the show. Clara had bought a beautiful wooden nutcracker for the tree, carved in the shape of a little soldier. My uncle found him in the woods yesterday and gave him to me, she said as they walked through the snow. He's lovely. The enormous tree by the ballet theatre looked beautiful. Everyone had decorated something on the branches uh, for the show. Kitty reached up and added her sparkly red ribbon and Clara uh, placed her nutcracker right in the centre. So here she is. This is Clara putting her nutcracker on there. But Kitty noticed that someone was upset. It was the sugar plum fairy. What's wrong? asked Katie. Prince Armand is missing, the sugar plum fairy sobbed. Everyone in the land of sweets is looking for him. There's posters everywhere. So here he is. Here's the prince that they're all looking for. Oh, sobbed the fairy. I hope that evil mouse king and queen haven't hurt him. Kitty gave her a hug. Don't worry, love. We'll find the prince. We'll help you search the land of sweets, said Rose. Oh, thank you, said the sugar plum fairy. She waved her wand and bing. To their amazement, the friends shrank down, down, down and down until they were no bigger than the sweets and the toys on the tree. The fairy parted the branches of the enormous tree to reveal a hidden kingdom. Oh my goodness, I wonder what's hidden in there. I can see some, let's have a look. I can see a sweetie house. And here is a little teddy bear. Kitty had never been to the land of sweets before. She followed the sugar plum fairy down a jelly bean path, past some gingerbread houses and licorice lampposts. It's so beautiful here, she said. I could stay forever, agreed Clara looking at the little sugar flowers. Although we do need to get back for the winter ball. They hunted high and low for Prince Armand, but he was nowhere to be found. Suddenly there was a cry from the candy cane tower. Watch out, the mice are coming. Those cheeky mice are always trying to eat our houses, said the sugar plum fairy. Without Prince to stop them, we'll need all the help we can get. She waved her wand, bing, and by magic, all the toys on the Christmas tree came to life. Let's have a look and see who we've got. Here we go, can you see the bear? 
and the horse and the soldier. Clara's nutcracker instantly stood charge. The toys fought bravely to defend the land of sweets against the evil mouse king and queen. The slinkies blocked the path. The jack-in-the-box hopped up and down to scare the mice away. And the teddy bears held off the attackers. The mouse king and queen were very cross. Who can do their cross faces? Get the nutcracker, they cried, charging towards Clara's beloved toy. No, no, shouted Clara. Kitty, come and help. Kitty looked around her and then on the branches she saw some sparkly red ribbon. The ribbon seemed enormous now. Kitty pulled one end of the fabric towards her. Take the other end, she called to Clara. Kitty and Clara danced around and round and round the, um, the Mouse King and Queen wrapping the ribbon really tight. In moments, they were trapped. It was clever of them, wasn't it? Hooray for Kitty and Clara, cried the sugar plum fairy, as the Mouse King and Queen were marched off to prison. Clara threw her arms around the nutcracker. Oh, I'm so pleased you're safe, she said. And she to Clara's amazement, the nutcracker jumped and shook. And then, in a swirl of magic, he turned into a handsome prince. <gasps> prince Armand, cried the sugar plum fairy. Yes, it's me, said the prince. The Mouse King turned me into a nutcracker, but you saved me. He gazed into Clara's eyes. I couldn't let those mice hurt you, said Clara, gazing right back. Clara, and he bent down on one knee. Will you stay with me in the land of the sweets? I will, said Clara. Yay! And everybody cheered. The sugar plum fairy clapped her hands. Oh, let's celebrate. Come and dance with us in the ballet tonight, said Kitty. I'd love to, said the fairy, but I don't have anything special to wear. Kitty smiled. I think I can help with that, she said. Wow. Let's have a look at the different outfits. So we've got a cowgirl and a fairy and a flamenco dancer. And we've got a someone who looks very sporty up here and then someone who's going ready to go for a disco. The sugar plum fairy has lots of choices, doesn't she? Kitty found the perfect outfit for the sugar plum fairy just in time for the show. Quick, said Kitty, take us back to Fairyland Village. The Sugar Plum Fairy waved her wand. Bing! And Kitty and her friends grew up, 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 until they were their normal size again. Everyone took their place and Fairyland danced the night away at the best winter ball ever. And the Sugar Plum Fairy was the star of the show. And everyone lived happily ever after. Thank you very much for reading that story with me. I enjoyed reading it to you. Stay safe, see you soon.